Hi everyone, uh, Randy here, N2CUA. Um, I was going to do a little quick um, demonstration, I guess, on <coughs> calculating the length of a piece of coax with the spectrum analyzer. This is mostly for my son, uh, James. He's um, KC0MCI. He's actually down in Jacksonville, Florida now. Um, but he originally got his call sign out in Colorado. That's why the zero, of course. Um, so, what I've done uh, so far here is I've got a p t uh, piece of coax connecting the uh, tracking generator um, on the uh, Rigel DSA815 analyzer, um, going through a T connector back into the input of the analyzer. <coughs> I'm going to go ahead and enable the tracking generator. And also what I'm going to do is uh, lower the frequency because I know where I'm going to start is going to be a lot lower than where I'm at right now at this point. So we'll take the center frequency here and set that to, oh I don't know, like 20 megahertz, so 20 and megahertz. And now we'll go back to the tracking generator and normalize the trace because the output of the tracking generator um, isn't f totally flat but the way they, they deal with that is by compensating with that or for that in the analyzer with software so we'll um, set the position here to 60 percent kind of lower it down so I can see it better and then uh, store the reference normalize uh, hit, hit that twice for some reason, I'm not sure why. Okay, so now the trace is normalized for the uh, tracking generator output with the cables I've got on here, because that all makes a difference. And as you can see, it's very flat on there. Okay, now I'm going to hook the end of a piece of coax on here. <coughs> and when I do that, oh, well, I get some interesting results, don't we? Uh, let's get my little pointer going here. And what you're seeing here right now, at least this is my understanding, is this first notch here is a quarter wavelength for some frequency. We'll have to figure that out. And then these are, I believe, every third harmonic as it goes up. So what we're interested in primarily is this first one here. Okay. So we'll go ahead and go back to frequency. And we'll take the stop frequency. And we'll decrease that and get that expand it out to where we can look at just that one first notch and zero in on that uh, dip right there as, well, as best as we can. Um, I'm going to go back and check the normalize again because it seems when you change stuff sometimes normalize goes off. Yeah, yeah that's what it, it's done that to me before. So I'm going to disconnect the coax for a moment and renormalize. There we go. And then we'll put the coax back on. Here we go. We have our dip back. It, it will change the position of the point to where that notch is, but just you know, like to do it properly, of course. All right. So we'll turn on a marker, and we'll adjust the marker so that we're right in the valley of that notch. Okay. Okay. So the best I can see here. I get it right at 22, I guess. Yep, 22, that's about it right there. It's not an exact science, but it's a, it definitely gets you very close from what I've seen so far. I've been playing with this. I did this this morning on 320 feet of coax. <laughs> it was pretty cool. Worked out really well, too. Okay, so um, the display is indicating that the marker is sitting at 2.212 megahertz. Okay, now the things we know here, we should go over some things we know and don't know here. What we don't know is the length of the coax. I have a rough idea, though. But what we do know is that you can determine a quarter wavelength for any given frequency by using the formula 234 divided by the frequency megahertz will give you the length. So, of course, you can also work that backwards to um, take a frequency in the formula and determine uh, the length. And the problem we have with coax, or the, um, not really a problem, the other factor that's involved with coax is when you determine the length of a quarter wave length, say an antenna, that's based on uh, free space. That's based on uh, uh, 
based on um, radio waves traveling at free space at 300 million meters per second, or 186,000 miles per hour, roughly. Okay, but with coax, because it's coax, um, it's a media which the RF's traveling down. It slows the uh, travel of that electrical signal down the coax by a certain amount, and that certain amount is called a velocity factor. Okay, because it is actually slowing the velocity of the um, the energy of electrical signals down the coax. Most, well, I can seriously say most coax. A lot of coaxes, common coaxes. Um, that velocity factor is 0.67 lots of times, okay? And I believe with the coax I'm using, that's probably going to be really close. Um, so, <clears throat> knowing those things, we can take the frequency, and I have a calculator here. You probably can't see it right there. <clears throat> we're going to take this and turn it on, and we're going to take and divide 234, which is the formula, by the frequency in megahertz, which is... 2.212, close enough. Okay, then that gives us 105 feet. But then you have to multiply it by the um, velocity factor. So we'll multiply that times 0.67, assuming that that's what it is. I'm pretty sure it is. And that gives us about 71 feet. Okay, and now the thing I've done just a minute ago was um, I have it kind of roll up in a little, you know, spool or bundle, whatever. And it's approximately ten and a half inches in diameter. And there's, I believe, 25 turns, 24 turns, something like that. And again, it's an average because, you know, not every turn is at ten and a half. It's just kind of an average of all the turns. So, we do uh, 3.14 times the diameter. Let's make it ten. Ten inches. Um, times the number of turns, which I said was 25. Divide that by 12, because that was inches. Okay, did not come out right. Well, it came out 65 feet, so maybe I better stick with the 10.5 inches. So 10.5 inches times 3.14 um, times 25 turns, I believe it was. Should have wrote it down. Divide that by number of inches in a foot, 12 inches in a foot, gave me 68 feet. Okay, so I come up with 70 feet, or 70, did I say 71 feet? Um, using the analyzer, came out with 68 feet, doing some rough math. I haven't actually measured the coax, but the point being, <coughs> you can do that, you can get close. Um, when it comes to measuring a really large length of coax, that's a whole lot handier than trying to roll out 100 yards of coax and trying to measure it. And the way I did that this morning, I would trust the analyzer in coming up with that length of coax long before I would try to sit there and, and g believe, you know, after counting, I forgot how many turns it was that a foot in diameter. It was like, you know, a lot of turns. Um, you know, that was really a rough guess compared to using the analyzer. Anyway, there's the ordeal. You can use the analyzer, um, find the frequency, use the formula, determine that feet. A number of feet, and then multiply that by the velocity factor. That should give you roughly the length of the coax you're working with. And I guess that's all I have on that. Kind of late at night. It's like a, you know, 12:30. I think it is, or almost 12:30. So, thank you for uh, watching and listening, <coughs> and um, and uh, bearing with my bit of tiredness here. But did want to do this for my son, so. Hope he enjoys it. Oh, and <coughs> next video should be with a better camera. I have a camera coming that will do 720p. should be here Thursday, I believe. And so hopefully when I start working on my video that has to do with a weak signal detection and discernment um, in, in the noise. That's the whole goal of that video. Um, we'll have a better um, video capture, and I'm hoping at 720p you'll be able to read the display a lot better. That's that's my hopes on that one. So, 7.3s everyone, and uh, thanks again for um, watching and listening. <laughs>